Welcome to Providence Church here in Graham, North Carolina. Providence Church, Graham, North Carolina, 819 North Main Street. During this time, when people are having to close everything, we're reminded that the church often gathers and then it scatters. But the church would be the body of Christ. And so during Lent, a lot of times people make jokes about what is Lent? And they say, it's a time to give up something. And a lot of people say, oh, I'm going to give up food for Lent, or I'm going to give up chocolate for Lent. And then the one guy said, I'm going to give up Lent for Lent, because I'm going to eat everything and do everything. This year, we're all giving up a lot of things, basically everything, for the good of the whole. And so there are very few things that we're able to do except continue to communicate with each other and also stay connected to each other because the body of Christ does need to gather, whether it's electronically or through other types of devices. When we can't meet physically, we need to stay tight spiritually. A lot of businesses are affected, particularly daycares and schools. Insurance agencies and other staffing problems. People already who feel isolated at nursing homes are now feeling even more isolated when people cannot come to visit. Many restaurants are having to close their doors entirely that cannot make it on just to-go orders. Churches and other helping agencies are having to adapt and find various ways to carry on ministries that normally would include gatherings of people. Normally busy streets are almost abandoned. Normally busy gathering places are shuttered for now. Government buildings closed. Amidst all of the closed businesses and altered ways of doing things, one of the murals in Graham is a good reminder during this time of Lent where we're giving up things. It is a reminder that truly love always wins. <laughs> Thank you. 
Museum and looking at a variety of places that have been altered by this challenge that we're facing now. Some words of scripture perhaps would be good for this uh, time together today. Philippians 4 verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. <clears throat> Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. And so today, let us pray. Heavenly Father, take these few moments, a little tour around our town, and a look into your word today, and give us what we need to be the people we need in the midst of this challenge. We thank you for that, and we know your promises are trustworthy and true. And we ask all this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. As we look at the scripture, it says rejoice. Now, when you look around town, a lot of people think, oh, it's nothing to rejoice about. And then you get a small check in the mail. <clears throat> it's not large. It's a Saturday morning. You want to go to the bank before it closes, just so you'll have it in case you need a little extra money. And so when you pull into the line, you realize that there are three avenues to go. They're all full. You can't back up your trap. You can't go inside the banks anymore. And so you sit there. And just like at the grocery store, you have picked the one that is not the fastest line. So you see the little tube going up and down in all the different three different avenues there. And you get behind the one that has a lot of transactions to make. And so you watch the left lane go, the right lane go, the left lane go, the right lane go, and, and so it goes. And as they're going, the tube that you're behind, you just want to wait, too. And it goes up and it comes down. They put something else in, it goes up and it goes down. And they ask a question, say, no, I want it different. So it goes up and it goes down. Okay, so I've only had one birthday during this time. I started at breakfast. It's getting close to lunch. The guy that's helping people line up, I'm asking maybe he will take our orders for hamburgers. The whole reason I'm telling you that thing is I could have gotten really angry, stomped out of the car, done something really ugly, let all of those emotions take charge. But instead, I found a little <laughs> comedy routine out of it. There's always something good to look at. A, I've got a car. B, I got a little check in the mail. Uh, C, uh, none of us died on the spot. We're all keeping our six foot distances. And so uh, we try to look and rejoice in the midst of these times. It's better to rejoice in them than to look back on them and rejoice because you miss half of the, the good times when you can't do that. So do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. I don't understand it either. Um, my, I guess, human reaction would not be at peace. But if you look at what's happening in a far worse sense to many people, you can always find a situation where your situation is a little better. So I encourage us to follow these words of Scripture from Philippians 4, 4 through 9. And then uh, we need to be sure to empty our minds of worry. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, present your request to God. 
the emptying of our mind of worry. Worry paralyzes. Fear paralyzes. And so we each need to remember that and remember that perfect love casteth out all fear and God is perfect love. So the more room we make in our lives for God, the less room there is for fear and worry. Fill your life with good deeds. Someone once said, imagine or vision the person that you want to be and this just go and be that person. So if you want to be the person that's kind and opening the door with gloves on these days <laughs> for people going in the post office or wherever, just go ahead and do it. And all of a sudden you are the person you envision. What we need to do is begin to envision the person that God sees us being and work toward that every day, allowing him to do the work for us. And so today is a part of the season of Lent, L-E-N-T, not this kind of Lent. It's a time where we're supposed to stop and have self-inspection, self-introspection, to look at ourselves and see where do we need to improve, what do we need to change, what needs to be changed in us, what, what do we need to allow God to uh, rearrange our, our life in some way. <clears throat> And so during that time, when we gather in our churches throughout the world, in our gatherings, too often our eyes and our focus would be on the speaker. Well, he's speaking not right. He's, he's not funny. He's too funny. He's, he's brilliant. He's too brilliant. He's, he's not brilliant enough. He, he knows the scriptures. He doesn't know. And we start looking at the carrier of the message instead of the message. When we also gather in person, we look at the people across from us thinking, well, why did they wear that dress? What kind of tie is that? And so a lot of times when we gather, it's harder for God to speak to each of us individually in our hearts to get us to look into the mirror and say, well, what about me? And so not that God did this by any means, but while it's happening, perhaps during the season of Lent, we can use this as a time to really take our eyes off of others, at least six feet off of them. And instead of gathering uh, physically, we still connect uh, socially and through various techniques and technology, but take this time to look into the mirror and focus on ourselves and allow God to do his miraculous work in us. So today we're going to also include some music. I'll try to edit this all together for you and uh, I trust that it's an enjoyable experience for you tuning in like this but also an encouragement to you to really make some spiritual growth decisions during this time as God speaks to you during this time of self-introspection and inspection and a lot of mirror looking. So look in the mirror, become at peace with the person that's in there because that person has received the peace of God. God bless you. Heavenly Father, take these words of my mouth, the meditations in our hearts, the thoughts in our minds, and work it together and blend it together and purify it in such a way that it's acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer through Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a good day and Make it a good day. It's the only one you have.
Dawn.